Teresa, and I'm here with Brittany. We are representing the 90s today with, uh, oops, I hit it again. We're gonna get sweaty with some 90s remix songs. Um, you don't really need anything, but uh, maybe having a water bottle on hand for in between the songs and maybe a towel or a t-shirt if you are extra sweaty, um, I will definitely be. <laughs> Hi, you guys. I'm Staza, and I was busy making a bad joke in the chat, so it's, that's what was going on. Um, but we're going to start by sweating it in style with me, so I hope you're ready to sweat. I don't know what. I'm like a hammer time. I just wanted to wear my hammer pants, um, so everybody go ahead and stand up. Boom, boom, boom. We are going to go through a series of dances through the decades. And I'm just going to turn this a little bit. We're going to do each dance for 30 seconds each. So I'm just going to go over all of the dances really quick. You probably know them, but just in case you don't, we're going to start with Running Man. The Running Man looks like this. Yeah? Or some version? Yep, yep, OK. Got it. Next, we're going to go into Disco Jumping Jacks. So in our normal jumping jack, we're popping up. Instead, we're gonna do disco arms and switch. Yeah, disco jacks. Our third one is the hustle. That's right. Da 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 da. Pelvic thrust. Pelvic thrust. Da 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 da. da, da. Pelvic thrust. Pelvic thrust. Yes. Hustle. Next is gonna be a jazz square. Hopefully, you're all familiar with a jazz square. I'm replacing my feet as I walk in an imaginary square on the floor. We can do whatever we want with our hands in this. After jazz square, we're gonna go into the twist. I like to do one little leg up, pass through center, come to the other side, pass through center. After the twist, we're gonna do Charleston bees knees. Really low squat, hands on knees. You're gonna cross them over, that's right. Okay, after that, we're gonna do crisscross, like hip hop jumps. So we're just crisscrossing any way you want it to be. <laughs> then we're gonna go into YMCA circles. So we're gonna do our YMCA, hitting each corner as we go, yes. Then we're going to do the hammer dance. If you don't know what that is, I'm gonna squat and I'm gonna scuttle like a little crab in each direction on the balls of my feet, okay? Then we're going to do a pop star move. So it's gonna be leg up, hands out to the side. So you're just a little pop star on stage. Yes, I don't know which pop star, but one of them does this. After that, we're gonna do some fist pumps. Some club fist pumps, yeah. Then we're going to go into uh, the single ladies walk. If you don't know what that is, it's gonna be down, down, down. So I'm moving forward as I'm punching down, yeah? Back and forth. So we're gonna do each of those for 30 seconds. Hopefully you get super sweaty and you have to shed your sequence, which I'm sure I will have to do. But let's get going with our running man. Do them now. Oh, yes. Running man. Running and then out. And I encourage you to play music if you have it, because I feel like all of these dances are just really fun with music. You can do it to any side you want. You can go to this side. You can take it in a circle. Oh, yes. Almost there. And we are going to switch to our disco jumping jacks. Disco arm jumping jack. Yes! And just make sure you switch around which arm you're doing the disco with. Who's, I like to think about poking somebody who's really tall in the nostril. Yeah, that's right. Because a lot of people are way taller than me. Poking them in the nostril. Oh. 70s are coming alive right now. Yes. We're going to switch to the hustle. Do 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 do. Hip thrust, hip thrust, 
Do, do, do. Mostly just care about that you're thrusting your hips and that you're moving. You can sing the hustle song in your head if you know it. That's what I'm singing. I won't sing it out loud because then you'll all mute me. Yes. Oh, you hustling. Do, do, do. Do, 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 do. Next, we're going to go into jazz squares. Da, da, da. And you can do the jazziest arms that you want to do. Da, da, da. It's showbiz, baby. You're on the stage. Show them what you got. This is your audition. Make it count. Go faster. Fastest jazz square. This is experimental jazz. Okay, almost there. Almost there. We are going to do the twist. Making sure you go through center to do both sides. Getting those hips nice and warmed up. Yes, you're all so wiggly and wonderful and bringing me great joy. Yes. Maybe you know all the songs to go with these dances and you're singing them in your head just like I am. Ooh, twist it like you would a little lemon. Okay, from here, we're gonna go into our bees knees. Legs are wide, in a squat. I'm going across, yeah. Here I'm trying to keep my core tight and my squat low so I can feel this in my booty. This gonna be a booty burner. And you get sassy with it. Cressy, you're super sass right now. <laughs> you're like, uh, uh, taking it super hip hop style. You're like, that's a 20, man. I'm living in the 90s. Okay, from here, we're gonna do our crisscross jumps. So cross, cross, yeah. Do whatever arms you want. You can take this in other directions. Maybe you make it a stripping moment. Yes. Yes. <laughs> nice job. Mostly just trying to keep our heart rate up. We are going to take this into what is this? I don't know. Oh, YMCA circles. So Y F C A. Yep. Keep going around. I'm not very good at hitting every wall, apparently. <sighs> Maybe it has to do with my inability to breathe at this moment. Yes. Also, I don't think my MCA arms are the best arms. Okay, we're gonna move on from that to our hammer dance. Assume your position. Do your little hammer dance or crab walk. Are you feeling crabby today? I'm gonna throw in the little crab hands. I think this one is a super, a duper burner of the thighs. Hopefully you feel that way. Yes. Scuttle, scuttle across that beach. Or I guess that dance floor. Dance floor, scuttle. The lower you put your butt, the more burn you will feel. Okay, we take it into our little pop star dance move. So it's a cross body twist to warm up our obliques. I can't breathe, so I have to talk between my breaths. Like a workout dance machine. Nice, you guys. You can do arms of choice here too. I just like getting a little flare, throwing that sparkle onto the dance floor. Stage. Yes, 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 yes. Fist pumps. Come on. I know you've all been in the club. I know you know what this is about. Yes. Switch hands. Who you jumping for? Each favorite DJ. Just kidding. You don't know what DJ this is, but you like it. Switching back and forth between which arm you're pumping. Or Pump them both. You're really, really feeling this jam. And you want that man on stage really far away to 
know that you care. Yes, pump it out. We are going to take it into our single ladies. Da, 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 da. Faster you can go, the more cardio you'll get. I didn't come up with a good uh, turn. So that's a choose your own adventure, you guys. That's right. I like to offer you the freedom of choice. <laughs> you guys look good. You look single and ready to mingle with all of your stuffed animals because we can't go out and mingle in person. Nice. Okay, woo! Shake that out. Hopefully, all those dance styles got you sweating. I'm gonna take a little sip of water, personally. Yes. Okay. Next thing we're going to do, because I can't do the worm, but you know what I can do? Burpees. That's right. That's my segue. We're gonna do 10 burpees with a push up. So, looks like so. Straight up, down, jump out, push up. Modify for what you need. Go on your knees if you need to. Do whatever you need for your dance terrific body today. Otherwise, let's do it, you guys. We're jumping, we're down, we're pushing up, we're back. And repeat. And I'll probably stop talking because I can't breathe. Halfway there. Couple more. Last one. Woo! Awesome. Shake it out. Let me check how much time I got left here. We're just gonna do some nice big neck rolls circling through our joints. Going the other way. You guys, I really need to do more cardio. Coming to center. See some backward shoulder rolls. Nice and juicy. You're squeezing that disco ball between your shoulder blades. Put your hands on the lead of the elbows. And then full arms. You're making room on the dance floor. I, I don't know about you, but I don't like when anybody's near me, so I just slap them away. Okay, we're gonna go forward with those shoulders. Nice and big. Kind of touch up to your ears. This is like a dance in its own. It's the, I don't know if I want to dance. Do I want to dance? Yeah, I'm a little groovy. Do I'm a little buggy? Put the hands on. We're gonna leave with the elbows. And then those big arm circles in front. Make that room on the dance floor. That's right, you're about to do some big move dancing. Go ahead and shake that out. Let's do some flicks of their hands. Up to the ceiling. Out to the side. Flicking off that sweat. Down to the ground. And grab your hands together. Let's do a little wrist roll. In the opposite way. Rolling it out. Take your fingers, undo them, cross the other ones on top. Same thing, we're gonna do little rolls. Your hand zipper is just opposite. Go the other way. Woo! On that note, me and my sweat stash are going to pass this over to Marisa. Yeah!
Nice job, Saza. Thanks for getting us off to a sweaty start. And you know what? Your wish is my command because we're doing more cardio. <laughs> but I'm going to uh, bring it down a little notch. So I have a few songs to do with you. Um, I was ambitious and planned for three songs. We'll see how many we get through. The first one's a little bit slower, so we'll kind of like, you know, ease into it. And then the second and third one will get a little bit more crazy. So for the first one, um, here are your exercises. We're going to start with a straight jump into a single leg squat. So we're going to do a big straight jump up, step forward into uh, a lunge, excuse me, not a squat. Straight jump, and then you'll do the other side, and a straight jump, and switch. So we'll alternate. Then we're going to take it down to the ground for some twisty foot stamps. So you're going to think about losing, using your lower abs to stamp the ceiling, but you're going to twist your hips every time you lift. Stamp the ceiling, twist your hips. All right, after that, it's gonna take us into the chorus, which is gonna be from a low squat. We're gonna get down low. Your feet stay planted the whole time. You're gonna walk it forward to a plank. Walk your hands back, bring it to squat, raise the roof. Go again, walk it back out at your own pace. Boop, boop, yeah. Pretty easy, we're just going to repeat that again. So we'll do our straight jumps, lunges, we'll do our stamp the ceilings, and then we'll do our uh, thing that we just did. The squat race through, sorry, brain fart. <laughs> um, so this song is pretty fun. My friend Calvin made it, it's called 90s Kid. Um, it's very near and dear to my heart because it gives me a trip down memory lane. So enjoy, follow along. Here we go. Y'all know what this is. And you know what this is. Well, this song's not gonna make a lot of sense. <laughs> yeah, I was a 90s kid. I went up with an already twist and squid. I went all the to a rocket t shirt clips, playing skip it and look at Raven Cox for my sense. At least that's the way that Clarissa explains it. Take me back to beat the boom box with this mix. Tapes and pop this. Necklace for the best friend and the power of games was only 95 cents. I was afraid to call my girlfriend. I can't admit to shitting my pants when it was picked up by her dad. And I couldn't send a text because it wasn't invented yet. So we passed the class and circle yes or no, no six men. Facebook and Twitter? Nah, we had chat rooms. The internet was brand new and it went a little something like. <laughs>
Do you guys remember Zombie by the Cranberries? Well, I found a remix for it. So, our theme for this dance party is going to be being zombie and then fighting off the zombies. So, I'll show you how we're going to get there. We're going to start off the song in a little bear pose. Hands down, bend your knees. And you're going to twist it out. My toes and ball of my foot stay on the floor and I'm pivoting on my feet to twist it. And after that, I'm going to stand up for a curtsy lunge. So I'm going to take one leg, step behind and curtsy, back to center, other side. If you want to throw up some punches, defense mechanisms, do that. After that, comes into our zombie dance party. So it's like, in my head, in my head, you know, zombie, you get to be your zombie, however that is for you. So I might um, eat Brittany over here, but <laughs> you get to do your own zombie. <laughs> And then we're gonna fight off the zombies. So when I say fight, then you have to fight off all your zombies. And then we will repeat. It'll just start everything over again from the bear, to the curtsies, to the zombies. Um, oh shit, back it up, I have one more exercise. I'll call these out, I promise. These are Superman push-ups. So you have an option here. You can go from your knees, bend down, to Superman, come back up, push up, down, Superman. If you're feeling quite beastly, you can go from a push up position. Down, extend, push it, back up. Yeah, okay, now I promise that's it. <laughs> so I'll give little quick cues, follow along, enjoy zombie time. Ta -ta. Another hand hang slowly, top dance slowly, take it. And the violence scars our silence, move our weakness, take it. What you see is the name, is the mind from the So, 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 so,
Good job, everybody. So fierce. What up here? Her she shaved her head. She's turning into 2000 degrees. <laughs> <pretty. laughs> okay, how am I doing? Okay. Okay. Last one. We got this. This one is for my namesake. <laughs> this is No Scrubs Remix. So good. <sighs> okay. So here are your moves that you're going to do. We're going to start off with a little bit of skanking. Those of you that have been to ska concerts before, skanking is a little kick, flex your foot, maybe do a little arms. Woo! Yeah. My brother was in a ska punk band. He taught me how to skank from a young age. Second. We're going to do our monster squat step out. I think we did this last week. So we're going to get low, and we're going to do to the side, to the center, to the side, to the center. If you want to add any arms, do some arms, whatever calls you. Woohoo! After that, we're going to do jumping jacks. Center, side, center, side. Okay, so it's going to go center, to the side, center, to the side. Every time I turn to the side, I'm facing forward, so it goes front and back, out to the side, front and back. Woohoo! So good. Okay. Then we go back to our monster squats. This dance party, you're gonna pop it out. Whatever that means to you. For me, that means I'm gonna pop my chest, or maybe some elbows, or pop the booty. <laughs> Whatever. Pop, 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 and pop. Do that for you. Okie dokie. For you. And then we bring it down over again. Probably gonna cut the song short because I'm dying. <laughs> so get ready to begin your last song, which is gonna start off with some skanking. Do -do -do. Yeah. 
you for partaking in the 90s shenanigans. You are all beautiful. I'm gonna pass it off to Tylan next, unless we're going to break. Are we going to break next, Christy, or are we going to Tylan next? <laughs> Sorry, I missed that. Unless you guys need a break now. We can <laughs> <laughs> no, no, don't tell anybody, keep going. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna go to Tylan for rock, paper, scissors. Woo! Well, let's do a thumbs up, thumbs down if you need a break and don't put your, don't move your thumb until I say I've seen everyone. So go ahead, thumb up or down, whether you need a break or no break. <laughs> I'm gonna say, woo, that was mostly no's. So why don't we take like a 30 second break to catch your breath and get water. And we'll do a, another couple minute break after Thailand's. I'm going to take a second just to do a shout out to my friends that are here that I don't ever see because we don't live in the same state. So even if we were in quarantine or not, I still never see them. But I see you in here. Your video is off, but I see you. All right, Tylan, you good to go? Mm -hmm. I just want to say, I think it's super unfair that I have to follow that. <laughs> that was so fun, Marisa. That was amazing. Thank you. I'm also really out of breath. So this should be fun. All right. So all we need for my section is a tennis ball. We will be on the floor for the entirety of my section. So find a comfortable space, your mat, your carpet. Um, if you are on hardwood, it might be a little uncomfortable. So I'll give you a minute to grab a blanket or a mat and I'll meet you on the floor. Ooh, okay, that done. All right, should be good, I think. All right, so the section today, it's called rock, paper, scissors. And we are going to go through all three of those shapes in one way or another. Very first thing we're gonna do is a Pilates roll down just to get our back starting to move. So we're gonna round our back, do that little cow puke <coughs> sound, shoulders forward, hands out in front of you, thumbs to the ceiling. Our legs can be at about 90 degrees with our feet on the floor. I want you to push your arms forward as you push your spine back, rolling one vertebrae down at a time. Once you get to your shoulders, you can bring your arms back. Oop, I don't have enough room. Bring your arms back, touch your thumbs to the ground, slowly bring them back up. Once they're at parallel, roll yourself back up. Try and only use your belly muscles to get you there. Come up to the top. And open and breathe. Let's do that two more times, as slow as possible. The slower you go, the more you win. Try and get those thumbs to touch the ground behind you. Just a little shoulder opener in there. All right, one more. One vertebrae at the time. Keep your belly tucked in. Your belly button is trying to touch its spine. Come back up. Open, grab your tennis ball or your lacrosse ball, whatever small ball you have. If you don't have a ball, that's okay. You have an energy ball, a ball of air, which is just as good. And we are going to stay in the same position, lifting our feet off of the ground. Try and remember to point your toes because we should always be practicing that. We're gonna take our ball, and toss it, or sorry, roll it behind our back, bring it up and over to the other side, roll it again. So it's across on a Russian twist, 
as well as a little bit of hand-eye coordination. All right, so whichever way you're rolling right now, do three more on that side. Whoop, ah! And switch, go the other direction now. Oh, I'm so much better at this side. You might notice one side is a lot easier than the other. That is a-okay. All right, two more. All right, let yourself relax for just a second. Breathe in, give your belly and those ab muscles all the love that they need right now because we're focusing just on our core. We're gonna hold that ball back in the middle of our hands. Extend our legs out. Bring one leg in towards your chest. Take the ball in your hands and bring your arms to the other side of your leg. And we're gonna scoop like we're in a canoe. Lift your straight leg off the ground and switch your legs and bring your arms to the other side. As you feel comfortable, you can start pumping your legs in and out. You're canoeing on the side that has the straight leg. Go back further, bring your shoulders closer to the ground, keep your legs off and come back up. All right, one more round going down. With every pump, get a little bit closer to the ground. Remember to breathe. All right, canoe yourself back up to the top. Ah, put your ball down. You're going to do Russian V twists. So a Russian twist is where we're moving side to side like this. A V is where you're coming up with both legs or one leg. So we're going to combine the two um, and start still in this sitting back position on our sacrum. And we are going to start on one side with our hands almost touching the ground with our knee up and bent and then switch to the other. It's similar to the canoe move, but instead of driving your arms, you're tapping to either side. If you like the ball in your hands, I do, just because it gives me a visual and something fun to do. I'm like a cat then feel free to use it to tap, tap. Try and get your legs even higher up if you can for that V-sit part. For me, that's pretty difficult. If you can do it extra, super duper kudos. All right, about five more seconds here. At the very top, put your ball down and see if you can hold this V-sit. Palms can be facing up to the ceiling. Squeeze your legs together, hold them. Relax down to the ground, heels touch, shoulders lower, arms extend behind you, and sit and breathe. We're gonna take three breaths here before we keep going. Feel your diaphragm fill up. In through your nose, out through your mouth. Two more. Last one. Yay, so good. We are moving on to the paper section. Let me look at my time here. Oh, okay. All right, paper. You're gonna take a hollow body hold, putting our sacrum down onto the floor, pushing all the air out from under our back, lifting our legs, arms go out behind us. We're gonna open and straddle and close, opening to a wide paper position bringing your hands together. You can keep your hands behind you, open and close, or down to your side. I don't have a ton of room, so I'm gonna do down to the side. Open and close, you're making snow angels. And opening your curtain to see what's in your closet. Many things could be done here. All right, three more. Try and do them as slow as possible on these last three. Feel every muscle engaged. One more. Whoo, so good. All right, we're gonna take that ball. And, ooh, which one do I want to do? The corkscrew, all right. So leaning all the way back. Head is resting on the floor. Legs go up into the air. We're gonna put our ball, if you want, you certainly don't have to, between our calves. Dun, dun, dun. We're gonna try and 
try and hold it there. If you have a bigger ball or a pillow, it could go between your ankles. I'm going to stick mine between these calves. Hands are going to go down on the ground. You can bend your legs in or keep them straight. Up to you. I'm going to try straight. We're going to pump up and try and give a little, little booty pop. So as our legs go up to the ceiling, we're showing off one hip at a time, dropping the other hip towards the ground. The opposite hip tries to touch the ceiling a little bit further. All right, 10, 10 more. Four, five, halfway there. Six, really push up, use those belly muscles. You can drive your hands down into the floor if you need a little more stability. I lost count because I was talking, no surprise there. All right, Whew. now just take a little break as you slide your foot on top of the other. So we're gonna have one leg extended out straight in front of us with our foot flexed. The other leg goes on top of it with the heel resting on our bottom leg's toes. We're gonna take our ball in our hands. You don't have one, that's okay. You can just put your hands to your heart, in front of our chest, slowly lean back, that same position as the Pilates roll down we did. Once we're on the ground, we come back up, keep your legs straight, and tap your toes. Arms come back in, slowly roll down and back, come back up, tap your toes. Breathe. I think I'm saying this as a reminder to myself, but you breathe too, everybody. All right, if you haven't switched, go ahead and switch your legs. So the one that was on bottom is now on top and vice versa. Oh no, my stockings have a hole. I can see my little toe. Well, it's my big toe, but it's a small big toe. Okay. Oh, touch. About three more here. Not everything is about going so fast. These movements can be slow as long as they are controlled. All right, everybody do one more. All right, last part of our paper is going to be keeping our, woo, keeping my legs up in the air. They can also stay down on the ground. That's okay. I'm going to try mine up. Hands go behind your head. If you want to keep using the ball, you can hold your ball in your hands behind your head and make little circles using your forehead to drive that motion of the circle. Keep the belly engaged as it's the one operating the vehicle. And switch other direction. Elbows wide, that was a reminder to myself. Oh, and relax. All right, last section is our scissors. So scissor kicks in general. We're gonna practice scissors V ups and then combine them. So our scissors will start here and we are switching our legs up and down, but also crossing our toes so they're stacked over one another instead of like this. So don't do this, but make little half moon circles with our toes. We do that for about 10 seconds. Then we'll practice V ups. Your head can rest flat on the floor and scissors. With all of these, try and get rid of that space beneath your lower back. For me, that means I kind of have to lift up a little bit. My transverse abdominus is still learning how to be a transverse abdominus. That's this little belt right here. All right. Now we're going to do a V up. So we practiced this V before. For the V up portion, we're here. We lower down to the ground, come back up, try and touch your shins or your ankles or your toes. Let's do about five of those together. 
Oh my God, my belly's burning. I hope you're all doing well. Whew. All right, two more, I think. Good, all right, we're gonna combine the two. So as our legs scissor around each other, we're gonna lift our back up and try and touch the top leg. It'll most likely be the same leg every time. If you can switch it off, that's even better. I have a hard time doing all the things and thinking about them. So you'll probably see my right leg being touched. All right, so start your scissor position. Start raising your scissors as you try and touch your toes at the top. Lower back down. Come back up. <laughs> Lower back down. Keep going. Two more. One more. Squeeze everything. Oh. Okay, I died on that last one. Oh my gosh. This is giving me a run for my own money. All right, last thing we are going to do are jackknives. So, again, we're sitting on the floor. You don't have to have your ball anymore, so feel free to put it to the side for our jackknives. We're gonna be leaning back like we've been doing. I might be stalling just to get a breath in. All right, we're gonna lift one leg, come up and pump through. So arms go on either side of the leg, come back out, lift the other leg, pump through. All right, let's go. We've got 10 of these. Eight. Six. Four. Three. Two. And one. Relax, good job. Very last thing we are doing is rolling jackknives. So we get to move a little bit more. This time, we're gonna start in this little tuck position like a little nugget. We're gonna roll back. So as we roll back, we're gonna keep one leg tucked in, extend the opposite leg out. As we roll forward, keep that leg tucked and still keep our hands on either side. Roll back, tuck both, extend the other leg, pump through. Keep that back rounded the whole time. You wanna be really quiet on the ground. If you have a flat back, it probably won't feel that good. It's more prone to injury. And you'll be able to hear it more. All right, five more, let's do it. Three, I keep rolling forward, four, and five. Good job. If we could kneel, breathe into our belly for a moment. Take our skirts down a little bit. Breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. From here, move the trunk of your body around, you go either direction, side to side, round your back, arch it open for your chest. Ah, thank you everybody so much for sticking through that with me. Cressy, I'm so excited to see you coach and be with you as one of your students. Thank you. Okay, awesome. We're just going to do like a super quick cool down before we do break. Um, this is my too cool for school section. So I obviously need my sunglasses. I invite you to put your super cool sunglasses on too. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's start in a nice tabletop position here. Actually, I'm going to put my earbuds in so you can hear me better. Can you hear me? You can hear me, this is great. Okay, tabletop position. We're just gonna do some cat cows. We did a lot today, you guys worked hard. I hope you had as much fun as I did. Let's go ahead and turn this into a disco kitty. It's 
Let's go around in a big circle. If you've never done this before, you're pushing your hips to one side, dropping the belly, lifting the tail and the head, and pushing your hips out to the other side from your ribs. Take your disco party in the other direction. We have a disco themed night fever party after dark on Wednesday. You guys should come. I'll be there. Let's go ahead and stretch it out into a nice cat pose here, a little cat stretch. So you're going to take your armpits down towards the ground, bum up, and you can take your fingertips and tent them if you want a little extra here. Good. You're going to walk your hands back to so your back in your tabletop position. Then you're going to shoot your legs behind you and lower into baby cobra. Think about pulling your chest forward and squeezing your shoulder blades together here. Now, if you'd like, you can lift your chin for a deeper stretch. And let's go ahead and push it up even further. And we're going to push it into down dog. From your down dog, you can pedal out your feet here. I also recommend practicing your handstand fingers here if you've been taking our handstand conditioning classes. I've been practicing my handstand fingers in every plank I've done since. Good, let's rock it forward to plank. Slowly lower down. One more stretch here. Good, push back up into down dog and bend your knees and jump your feet forward if you can. Let's find a seated position here. We'll take one leg crossed over the other, plant the top foot down on the floor so your knee is pointing up towards the ceiling. Take your opposite arm across that top knee, that free arm in the back and reach behind you to deepen this twist here. And you'll take a deep breath to lengthen your spine up towards the ceiling. And on your exhale, you can twist further into your chest. And repeat that a few times, breathing to lengthen, exhaling to put deeper into your stretch. I could do this all day. All right, let's come back around, grab that foot here. We're gonna put the palm of our palm, arch, <laughs> the arch of our foot in our elbow pit. We're gonna take our other elbow pit and put our knee in there. Meet our hands at our shin for a little rocking back and forth here. And you can go ahead and just hug that in. Hey, hello, leg. I love you. Good. You can do a fancy little kick to switch. Or you can do a fancy little twist, twizzle, turn around. You can play around with both for a second. All right. Go ahead and plant that foot firmly on the floor. Opposite arm up and over. Free arm reaches behind you. Lengthening on the inhale. Lifting deeper on the exhale. Nice. Let's cradle that leg. Give it a hug. And just for funsies, we're going to do this little choreography. So you're going to go bam, switch, bam, switch, twist. Switch, kick, switch, stand up, turn the body around to get your other leg on top and back. Excellent job, guys. All right, we're going to take a three minute break. When you come back, please bring your foam roller with you and your ball. And if you don't have a foam roller, I invite you to get creative. You can maybe take a yoga mat longwise and roll it up. That might work. You just need to be elevated off the floor with support on the high Diana, I see you. With support under your head and your tailbone. Okay, so let's meet back here in three minutes.
Yay, all right, we'll get started in just a minute as I see people start to filter back in. Hey, Alicia. <laughs> so if you guys saw the screen share I had up just now, it showed our new schedule for next week. We don't have as many classes and we're only doing five days, so make sure you come to all of them to soak up all the awesome or watch them on YouTube later. All right. Okay, so I'm just gonna talk for a second. Um, so what I'm sharing with you guys today, a lot of this information has come from um, an article on shoulder health that I will post in the event page. There are some additional exercises that we're going to be doing, but it's all along the same concept. The article that I'm going to post is a two-part article. The first part talks about myofascial releasing and um, static stretching. And then the second part talks about strengthening. We're not going to be doing any of the strengthening exercises from the second article, but we will be doing some other strengthening exercises that I learned from my husband, who learned it from his physical therapist. So let's <clears throat> so shoulder health. A rotator cuff, we're very prone to injury. Thank you for the comment on my makeup. I appreciate it. <laughs> um, we're very prone to injury if we're circus artists or dancers, aerialists, climbers. Really, if we sit for too long and then we try to do something crazy, we're all prone to injury in our rotator cuff. And <clears throat> our shoulder works and we have a lot of stuff going on and it all works together. So it's really important that we address the health of our shoulders as an overall concept. So if one part of my, say for example, my pec is hurting, it may not just be my pec that's causing the problem. There could be tightness or things off in other parts of my shoulder girdle that are causing tightness in my pec. So we're gonna try to access as much of the shoulder in one session as possible for an overall health. We don't want to just address the one part that's hurting. We want to address the entire shoulder and make sure that it's strong, but also not super tight. So the first thing we're going to start out with is our foam roller, which of course is on the other side of the room. So one second. Okay. Now you're going to start by sitting with the foam roller behind you. Sorry if it takes me a second to get my angles right here. Um, and the goal is to roll back so that it's in our upper spine here. And we're going to, I'm just gonna talk real quick, but you can play around for a second trying to find that spot. We're going to lay with our arms crossed and holding our shoulders with our chin tucked and our hips elevated. Okay, and we're just gonna roll out the upper back now I'm gonna give everybody a minute for this. Take it at your own speed. If you find a spot that feels amazing, spend a little more time there. If it hurts, just stay there and breathe into it. You wanna use as much body weight as you can comfortably use without hurting yourself. So you, you want it to feel like it's doing something, but you don't want it to hurt. And I'm gonna start my timer right now. If anyone has any questions about this, you can go ahead and put it into the chat box. Um, if you have a question and you're not seeing me respond to you, it's a little hard to do both, feel free to unmute your mic. Just please remember that if your video is on and you unmute, you will pop up on our public YouTube video. This is very difficult to do with a long headband on, by the way. <laughs> it just gets stuck underneath. So you do not need to spend the entire minute here either. If you're feeling done with this exercise beforehand, that's fine. These exercises can be done every day. It's recommended for ideal shoulder health that you do these kinds of things at least three times a week, especially if you're an athlete of any sort, like many of us are. And right now we're working on the rhomboids and the trapezius muscles here. So this is one of our self myofascial release techniques. Okay, you can go ahead and stop. Great. Um, so that can be done for one to two minutes, whatever you're feeling when you have your own time to work on this. The next thing we're gonna work on is the posterior shoulder. So we're gonna go to the back side of the body here. 
Now watch me for this one first and then go ahead and try and find the position and then I'll start our timer. Same thing, we're gonna go for a minute using as much body weight as is comfortable and stopping where it feels like it needs a little more attention. So we're gonna lay this under our shoulder here, okay? And we're going to take our arm out to the side, straight out from the shoulder blade, and then we're gonna slowly roll until we feel the pressure on the ball. Then you'll take your arm up to a 90 degree angle. So if I'm facing you guys this way, that's gonna look like this, okay? And then you're gonna take your wrist in your other hand and just very slowly move up and down. For some people, this might be really, really painful. So only roll into that space with as much weight as feels reasonable. Okay, my timer is started. If you have any questions or this isn't making sense to you, please ask. And you can control how much pressure is in there by how much you roll your hip up and over. And we're using our hand on our wrist here so that we're not exerting too much force by trying to push through that arm itself, but just using our other hand to help move ourselves through this position. Now, I have a spot right here that is really intense for me. When you find those spots, if you have more time, you can spend up to 30 seconds kind of holding that place to find that release. Um, this is also myofascial release since working with trigger point release. So holding in places that are really intense will help relax everything in that spot. You wanna move past the shock factor and let your body know it's okay. Good, that minute's up. We're gonna go ahead and switch to the other side. I'll give everyone a few seconds. Again, we're gonna start on our back, place it behind the shoulder, arm comes out, slowly roll till you find the pressure, bring that elbow up, oh, oh yeah. And use your other arm to push up and down. Now, of course, you don't need to do this with your other hand. I really like to do it because what it does for me is it keeps the rest of my arm and shoulder relaxed, so I'm not engaging the muscles here. But do what feels best for you. You can also, if this is like super uncomfortable for your neck and you're practicing this in the future, you can toss a little yoga block under your head here too. Um, so in case I didn't say this already, I will be posting that article for you guys in the event page. And in general, if any resources are used by your coaches in class, feel free to check the event page later on for those things. Because I know Leah has posted a bunch of awesome anatomy stuff from her self-care workshops, so it's worth giving it a look. And we always post the video on the event page too. You guys are doing great. And stop. Awesome. Okay, so now we've worked the rhomboids and the traps and the sh back behind the shoulder blade here. Um, and so now we're going to move on to pec major and minor. Um, so all these things hold us here and they, they do incredible, incredible things. There's so many mechanics involved in the way that the shoulder moves and it's important that they're all doing the right thing. Otherwise we jam the wrong, we jam stuff up and it's really crappy. I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with this. Okay, for this next one, we're going to start Mm, get the right angle. So basically, we're going to be laying down. We're going to put this right underneath. What is this called? Your clavicle. Right below your clavicle here, okay? And this is something you can play around with too, like where it feels good a little bit further in or further out. We're going to lay on top of it, and our arm is going to be at a 90 degree angle. I'm just going to show you that first. And you're going to very slowly raise your arm up. When it gets to the top, you're gonna to take a pause, a breath. And we're gonna bring it back down to 90. Okay, again, using as much body weight as you can handle, stopping in places where it feels really good when you're doing this on your own up to 30 seconds. And again, you can do these up to two minutes, 
okay? But you want to take it slow. You don't want to jam anything. You don't want to rip the muscles. You just want to remind it that it's okay to relax. I'm going to start the timer now. Let's get that right under the clavicle. <coughs> Angles are hard. Okay. Let's see. Let's see. I can rest my forehead on my hand if I'd like to. And I'm really can control how hard I'm pressing into this ball right now. If you find yourself getting stuck and your arm doesn't want to go, just stop there and take a breath. After you've taken that breath, see if you can go a little bit further. It's super important that you don't push yourself too hard in these. This is definitely not comfortable, but it's not supposed to cause excruciating pain or make anything worse. Got 10 more seconds here. Good job. Awesome. Let's go ahead to the other side. And minute has just started. <laughs> okay. So I'm quite. I have some pretty serious issues with my shoulder girdle on this side. And these exercises are very important for me to do regularly. Because it hurts that much more than I do. Remember to pause at the top. And again, you can kind of play around with where this is. When I'm doing this on my own and I have more time, I like to start with the ball a little farther in towards the center of my chest. And then I do another minute with it out a little further towards the outside for this right in my shoulder. We've got 10 more seconds here. Excellent. Now I'm just gonna show you this real quick because this is not included in that article. But another thing that can really, really like pull our shoulder forward and make everything tight is tight lats. So if everyone just takes a second to feel this, you can take, you can do this with a ball as well, but it's really nice with a foam roller just to get it into your, do your little sexy mermaid pose and just roll up and down the lat. And our lat muscle actually goes all the way down along the side of the ribs. So you can take that as far as that feels good. I'm gonna just do it on each side real quick. And I have to apologize. We are gonna go a few minutes over. We kind of started my section five minutes late. If you need to go, please feel free to recap later with the video. And know that even if you're stopping here, this has still been really good for you. Awesome. Okay, so now we're gonna move into static stretching portion of this. And I'm not gonna do this against the wall just for the sake of not moving my camera right now. But if you're able to sit with your back up against the wall, it helps keep your scapula um, nice and stabilized. So do that if you can. What we're gonna do is your typical cross body shoulder stretch. So you're gonna take your arm across and we're gonna do this for just for 30 seconds. And you wanna think about pulling it until you really feel that stretch behind your shoulder. Now, I like to add a little bit more to this by thinking about pulling my shoulder down. It makes it a little more of an active stretch as well. Now, if we had all the time in the world, I would have us do this for 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off. So we do 30 seconds on one side, which is coming up in five, four, three, two, one switch 30 seconds on this side and then you would repeat that three times so you're doing a total of a minute and a half we don't have that time right now but this is a practice that you can take into your own time and really elaborate on it this could take a good 20 minutes or so to do everything awesome okay now here's where it's important that you have a base where you can support your tailbone and your head and allow your arms to come off the side. We're going to combine um, both um, stretch and strengthening conditioning at the same time. So first one that we're going to do 
So we're gonna lay across, I'm gonna sit on it. So my tailbone is there, my head is on top. My feet are planted on the ground here, okay? And then I'm gonna take my arms up overhead and then very slowly on an exhale, bring my arms out to the side and just let them fall to the side. You can relax your elbows and you're not forcing your arms down to the ground. You'll find that your shoulder blades squeeze together here. So I like to do a little lift of my chest just to get those shoulder blades rested on the foam roller so that I'm not squishing the foam roller with my shoulder blades. Now, here's a stretch that feels really good to do for up to three minutes. We don't have that kind of time right now, unfortunately. So we're just going to stay here for a few more breaths. And the next exercise that we're gonna do is we're gonna bring our arms up overhead and we're gonna clap them and we're gonna do 10 of those. So we're gonna go one and down and really take your time with these. So here we're opening up into this extension where we're also conditioning with all the little muscles. We have big muscles and we have stabilizer, little muscles. And we want them all to do their job. I compensated for a really long time with my bicep muscles because I didn't know how to not have micro bends and I didn't have very stable shoulders. And that was years ago and I'm still recovering from that. So these are great exercises for both preventative and rehabilitation. Good. Now, take your arms down to your side. You're gonna do palms to the floor and then you're very slowly gonna raise up into a cactus shape. Your elbows, if you're like me, are not going to be touching the floor. That's okay. We're letting gravity slowly take it where it needs to go. We're not forcing anything here. So you're just gonna breathe. This feels so good for me. My pecs are probably the tightest part of my body, in my shoulders anyway. This stretch really gets there. The next thing that you're gonna do from here, again, you could stay into this. I would have stayed in here for a minute if we had a little more time. But we're almost done. You're gonna take your arms straight overhead. Now bring them back up to shoulder height. And then you're going to do palms up. You're just gonna do little snow angel arms. Now your arms can dip as low as they'll go, but you wanna keep integrity in your arms so that you can take it slow so that you're not too low in any position. So. For me, when my arms come up overhead, they're not gonna be quite as low as when they're at my side. So I wanna kind of coast through the depth that works for each angle of my arms here. Again, this would be something you do 10 times. I've not been counting, I'm just walking you through it right now. Good. Slowly bring your arms back to center. The next thing that we're gonna do is little swimmer arms. So you're gonna do 10 on each side. So you're gonna go one arm up, one arm down. And you're really thinking about extending up, extending down and pressing with each one of these. So my bottom arm is reaching as long as it can and my top arm is reaching as long as it can. Okay, you're gonna take a second in each one to really kind of push down into that space. All right, we've got three more little things that we're going to do in order of each other. And this is the little punching section. So you're going to take your arms up in little fists and you're gonna push your shoulder blades up as far as you can. And then you're gonna pull them in. Okay, so you're pushing and then pulling. This is very active here. This is conditioning. So the movements where we're um, just kind of passively lying is for our stretches and these are our conditioning. So we're gonna do 10 of these. Talking and counting is almost impossible, so I've not been counting. <laughs> I'm gonna give you the next one. Now we're gonna roll forward, bring it down, shoulders up push-ups are basically making long, exaggerated circles. Uh, 
I find these to be the hardest. <laughs> and usually by the time I get to this, I'm pretty fatigued. <laughs> but you can do it. And then the last one is to do the opposite. So push up and roll backward. And I see some people are doing it directly on the floor and I'd be curious to know how this feels for you later. I know the stretching parts are probably harder. You can also lie. Yeah, I don't know. I think a, a yoga mat rolled up um, long legs would probably be a good option. Good, and let's just go ahead, bring those arms back down to the side. Take three deep breaths here. And now with great care, slowly roll off your foam roller <laughs> and melt onto your floor. You guys did an excellent job. I invite you to continue stretching out your shoulders if you feel like you got more in you and that wasn't enough. I went, oh, I did my exact amount of time, but I did go five minutes over. So thank you guys so much for sticking it out. You guys are wonderful. It's always such a treat to actually get to coach for you guys. Thank you. That was really fabulous, Cressy. I've never done anything like that with my foam roller. So thank you so much for introducing me to something new. I feel like that's been my, well, I have many favorite parts of Circus Workout Party, but one of them is how many mo like new things I'm learning with stuff that I already have in my house because I'm not going out of my house to go get anything. <laughs> thank you everyone for sticking with me today. This was really great, Cressy. Thank you so much for giving a platform for all of us to come together during this time. This was a really fun, creative workout today and I'm so tired now. I hope everyone enjoys their weekend and we'll see you guys again next week. Thank you. Hey friends, thanks for joining us today. That was super fun. <laughs> My body and soul feel really good and I hope yours do too. And thank you, Cressy and Croaches, for bringing all your creativity and new things and knowledge to share. Love you all. That was so much fun, and I sweat more than I have maybe ever in any of the other <laughs> circus workout parties, which always makes me feel just very effervescent and glowing. So thanks, guys. That was awesome. Thanks, everyone, for joining. And Cressy, thank you so much, as always, for making these happen. They are.